So, if you was to ask people what everybody's favourite Rockstar games are, you're probably going to get a lot of the same generic answers. Now, there's nothing wrong with the generic answers, don't get me wrong, GTA 5 and Red Dead Redemption 2 wouldn't be as big as they are if they were as good as they are, but that was never the case for me. For me, my favourite Rockstar game has always been L.A. Noire, and the reason is easily my obsession with crime. I love watching crime documentaries, my favourite show is Criminal Minds and stuff like that. So, when Rockstar announced a new game, and putting you in the shoes of a detective solving those nitty gritty crimes and piecing together all of the evidence that you collect, I knew pretty well that I was going to be obsessed by this, and obsessed by this I was. I must have put so many hours into this game when I was young, but no matter how many times I played it, I never went for the achievements, so that is what we're going to be doing today folks. We are going to be grinding every single achievement that LA Noir has to offer to ask the question, is it still my favourite of the Rockstar games? So don't forget to like and subscribe for more, and let's get straight into it folks, welcome to the Achievement Grind. The game begins with an opening shot of the grounds that we will be detectoring over. A soothing voice tells us about the drive and passion of the American people, and we start our journey as Cole Phelps responding to an APB of shots fired. When we arrive, we meet our superiors who tell us of a murder. Somebody has been shot to death, so we need to now find the gun. It's a small step, but eager to prove ourselves, we crack on. Now, with the gameplay of L.A. Noir, firstly, you scout the crime scene looking for clues and evidence. Now, as you inspect the scene, you can investigate many things. From badly rolled up sellotape bundles to small clear miniatures of Audrey 2 from the Little Shop of Horrors. With the evidence collected though, that will allow you to help interrogate suspects later on, but a little bit more on that later. Now for this crime, the gun is an easy find, since the killer chucked it on the roof. We just simply ascend ourselves and grab it. Wanting to take a step further though, we then take it to a gun shop to hopefully identify the owner. Luckily, we do get a name and an address, so we go to confront them. As you'd imagine, things go wrong quickly and we end up in a fight that of course course, we win easily as we are simply put together in an off-brand manner. With the suspect caught, that's our first case solved and the first step into becoming a proper detective. Now, the next mission just simply has us take down some robbers during a bank heist. Another quick mission, but just to get you used to the gunplay of the game, so we quickly stop this crime and move on. Finally, it's time to get to a case with some substance. Whilst walking the streets, we hear shots and jog to find a dead body. We put our detective skills to the test and then find the gun used in a nearby bin. Time to question somebody for the first time. Having to ask the hard questions and gauge the response based on the evidence and the person's reaction is a wonderful way to truly make you feel like you're trying to squeeze all of the info out of them. Now, through this witness, we come to realise that the person was killed by a rival jewellery store owner, so when we go to question him, they of course run away. However, with some convincing warning shots, they stop and we nab them. The final part of this mission is to interrogate the suspect and get that confession. Now, since this is the tutorial, of course, it's fairly easy to get it out of him. But with that, our first proper case is solved and we are instantly promoted and we're now a traffic detective. It's wonderful and also wonderful is unlocking our first achievement, Police Academy. And due to the recent promotion, I cannot stress how seriously we now take our duty as a policeman officer. Out of the car, police. But why do you need my car? Because you broke the f law. Uh, <laughs> how do you feel? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, if I can quickly come in, please don't think ill of the fact that every person that I encounter, I either push over, mug, run over, kill, repeatedly kill. I'm a very good cop, I'm just trying to do my best in difficult circumstances, so yeah, carry on, carry on, carry on. Now, whilst going through missions, you have the opportunity to respond to small crimes that happen around the city. There are 40 in total, and we need to do them all. Once the next mission starts, the first one becomes available immediately, so we respond. When we arrive at the scene, it's shown that there is a masked gunman on top of a roof. It is just as simple as to chase down the bastard. It's going quite well, however, I come to find that shooting him directly in the cheek puts him down for good. Apparently too good, as he is now dead. Oh, whoops. Anyway, with our first street crime completed, we also unlock a cop on every corner. Now the first proper mission. We are called to a crime scene of an abandoned car filled with an insane amount of blood. However, it's already time for our next achievement though, as when we open the boot and inspect a receipt for a live pig, we unlock one for the file for finding our first clue. Now at the crime scene, we find out who the potential victim might be, as well as the pipe that may have been used on him. So we then go talk to his wife about his disappearance. She speaks mostly the truth other than the fact that they've been 
having some marital issues. But for catching Mrs. Black out in a lie, we lock another achievement for using evidence to prove said lie, gaining the straight dope. You're going to be amazed though, folks, as we have another achievement. Now, outside, we find a water heater that hasn't been completed. So as the great cop we are, we decide to assemble it ourselves. Not only does it show that the pipe that killed Adrian came from his own house, but we also unlock our next achievement for completing a puzzle clue, unlocking the plot thickens. We then head over to a bar to talk to his co-worker that apparently he always hangs out with. He folds pretty quickly, saying that Adrian is holed up at his house waiting for money to leave town. We head to the apartment, find Adrian Black and arrest him. Our first mission complete and it feels good. We did so well in fact that we unlock three more achievements of course. The third degree for not failing a single interview question during the case, Golden Boy for clearing a case finding every available clue, and the up and up for completing a case with a five star rating. How absolutely sensational. So, let's move on. Now the next mission honestly doesn't have anything of interest to say besides two things. Firstly, during the start of this mission you'll be amazed to know that we have another achievement lined up. It is for simply driving five cars in the game, unlocking auto enthusiast. Now there are a couple of achievements later on for driving every single available car in the game and honestly it sucks, so this is something that we're going to be grinding throughout the campaign. More on that later. Now the second point of interest is something that I'm sure some of you may be familiar with. It is just a simple couple of lines of dialogue during an interview. However, it has to be the most insane dialogue that I've ever heard in a game, so I'll just let you be the judge of it. You fuck young boys, Valdez. <laughs> Are you a madman? <laughs> this would cause an international incident. <laughs> Anyway, carrying on from that, the next case shows a man get hit by a car, pretty fatally. We find the generic clues and talk to the witness who says that the man was arguing with his wife beforehand. But what's this? A bin? With a knife in it? Interesting, I'm sure this won't be important later on. For now though, we just speak to the man's wife, who is all sorts of odd. Not only does she not care in the slightest about her husband's death, but it's pretty obvious why as her side piece soon enters the scene. Oh, sorry, business partner. Back at the corner his office apparently the car wasn't the cause of death he had been stabbed just moments before now since we had already found the accusing knife on the first scope of the scene we unlocked the next achievement stab right the only people capable of this are the wife and her little friend so we make our return and their plan falls apart pretty quickly the wife then admits everything Leroy shoots her and then takes off now unlike the last time when we shot cheeks this time we shoot the air Leroy stops and the case is solved we also get an achievement for stopping a suspect without shooting them, unlocking Not So Hasty. Now, honestly, folks, with the amount of cases in the game, with the amount of side missions and collectibles and all of that kind of stuff, it is going to be quite difficult for me to go in depth as fully as I normally do. So I am only going to be talking about the missions that unlock achievements. Don't worry, though, because I will try to fill in the gaps, of course, as best as I can. For the next case, though, it is our first DLC case. They have their own little small list of achievements, so let's go through it now. The case starts with us seeing somebody in a stolen car. We expect slam them off the road moments later and unlock nowhere in a hurry for doing it without the other cops intervening. Now it turns out that this man bought a stolen car thinking that it was clean as the pink slip proves that it was. Talking to the car salesman himself doesn't really give anything fruitful as you would imagine so we go to talk to the man who makes the pink slips instead. He seems a little bit dodgy but okay for now however we find an address at his business that may give us results. Now this location turns out to be a good for nothing chop shop so we hollow the place out of any inhabitants also unlock Unlocking another achievement for dropping an entire engine on some poor dude's bonds. Unlocking Chop Shop. But hey, at least it wasn't a frigid air. Now the leader of the shop has a massive box of blank pink slips in his office. And when we find those, we also unlock Racing for Pinks. But with that, we know pretty well that Lightvol is the person responsible. He was trying to make some extra money to fuel his gambling, and with plenty of evidence, he goes down. For completing the DLC mission as well, we also unlock the Prince's Devil. Honestly, I don't remember this game being so generous with achievements at all. However, However, here we are and I am not actually going to complain in the slightest about that. Well, for now, anyway. It's time for another mission, though. This one sees somebody try to kill two people by sending their car over a cliff. Thankfully, a billboard stops them from going further into the afterlife, but we find out that the two occupants of the car are both film stars. Well, one film star and one younger girl who wants to be a film star. Whilst inspecting the wreck, we then find a shrunken prop head that was used to jam the accelerator down. However, when the interview with Jessica proves a bust, we then decide to follow June to see what she was trying to get away so fast for. Now, this is the first stealth section, almost 
almost in the game, you have to tail people either by foot or by car, and stupidly you have to obey all of the road laws so that they don't spot you. How boring. However, we follow her inside of a cafe and we unlock the shadow for tailing somebody for the first time without being spotted. Now, on the phone, we hear June saying that she wants this taken care of and now, but also mentioning a Mark Bishop, so that's our next step. Well, it would be, but we have another small crime to deal with. Nothing too important, but I do need to mention this as we get another achievement during it, as when we find a suspect and proceed to have a pretty lengthy fisticuffs battle with them, when we win the fight without having our hat punched off, we unlock the next innkeeper lid on. And yes, this is very important, Phelps is very protective over his hat, and for good reason, so let's just, let's just leave it there, yeah? Alright then. Now eventually the case leads us to a prop store that supplies films with, um, oh yeah, props, of course. But we're here to see the owner's casting couch. Looking around we also find more shrunken heads, but that's not all. We find a peephole, a secret recording camera and chloroform. Unfortunately, Jessica was assaulted as well. Now the man who owns this building is a criminal informant, so he is unfortunately untouchable. And we find out that the person responsible for the assault and the attempted murder was indeed Mark Bishop. He is also a film star, so we go to interview him on his new set. When we arrive, he takes off as you would imagine, but we catch him and charge him with the assault and attempted murder. It turns out that we aren't the only ones after Mark though, as some mob goons arrive to take justice as well. An absolutely massive gun battle takes place in which we destroy the entire set coming out victorious. With that, the mob are now stopped slowly for now, Mark is arrested and we've been doing so well on traffic that it's time for our first promotion. We are now working murders on Homicide, and Homicide is my favourite side to be working on. To celebrate our win, we then go to a bar with our partner and Roy L, a vice cop who is as dirty as he is racist, sexist, sleazy, just every bad adjective that you can call somebody. However, we take in the show and even meet a famous German singer, Elsa, as well, but more on this gathering later. Oh, and I almost forgot, for earning our new promotion as well, we unlock the next achievement paved with good intentions. Six months have now passed since Phelps got that promotion and we then see a man immediately kill a woman with a tire iron. Now, I can't show it because she's all sorts of naked, however the woman is now completely naked and a bunch of words have been written on her in lipstick. Other than the damage to the woman, the only thing that we find at the scene is a fancy lighter from the Bamba Club, so we immediately go there to find out more. At the club, we talk past the absolute nothing human that is Garrett Mason the barman before talking to the boss. Apparently, she was there the night before and some guy was very interested in her. They left together and we get the license plate from the man. And thanks to asking the right questions and forgetting the plate, number from him, we also unlock the next achievement, Round Heels. Oh, and I also forgot something important. During this case, I will be trying to go for an achievement, and this achievement has us racking up over $47,000 worth of damage in a single case. So if you see me crashing into cars and buildings and people, just know that it's totally under control. I've got this. Before we get back to the case proper as well, we did a couple more side missions, and in those we shot our 30th bad guy in the skull. When we arrested his brain matter, we unlocked wooden overcoats as well. Now, even though the husband seems quite keen on making himself look guilty in his wife's murder, the license plate that we got from the owner of the bar makes good. We're told it belongs to a Mr. Menendez. We break into his place and immediately find both the murder weapon in a box, as well as the red lipstick that was used. He arrives home and correctly decides to go for a car chase instead. Now, I say that this is correct as it allows us to get another achievement as well. Our partner shoots out his tyres and we literally blow right through him, but by doing so we also unlock traffic stop. We have caught him and the case is solved, and for causing all of that damage that I mentioned, we had totally succeeded in causing the government a lot of money, and from that also unlocked public menace. Now, even with a murderer locked up, a woman's body is found a little while later. Now, there wasn't any messages with this, but like the last, a ring was ripped from her finger. So many still believe it to be the work of the Black Dahlia killer. And just like before, her husband loves the idea of making himself look guilty. After investigating him, we go to quickly talk to the neighbour where we also quickly steal a car, and making it the 40th car that we've driven totally in the game, unlocking another achievement as well in Auto Collector. However, when talking to the neighbour, we see that the husband has started to burn some clothes. So we chase after Greg Grunberg and tackle his wife killing ass to the floor, unlocking yet another achievement with Asphalt Jungle. Now, it turns out again that it wasn't the husband. Through sheer brilliant detective work, we find out that it might be by a local man we find at a school. I sure hope he isn't a creep or anything. You've been in trouble with the law before, Eli? Some. What are you doing around here? I like to keep an eye on the children. Strictly paternal. Wow, he was forthcoming with that. 
But not only did he have the murder weapons in the boot of his car, he also had on him a golden butterfly brooch that belonged to the recently departed. So we take his weird ass in and that's another case closed. But as you would expect, it happens again. Another woman is found and this time once again she does have lipstick on her. Some think that it's the Black Dahlia killer, some think a copycat, but after a path of clues were purposefully left by the killer at the crime scene, it could be anybody. Now honestly, this case is quite odd in my opinion because it doesn't really go anywhere. We find clues of course and interview people, but we eventually eventually again find the murder weapons in a fruit seller's spare room. We arrest him and bish bash bosh, done. The same keeps on happening though. Women keep turning up dead, people are arrested, however the murders don't stop. Now the next course of action for us though is to complete more side missions. In fact, we were going through them so nice and quickly that soon after separating a couple more peoples from their brains, we completed our 20th mission and unlocked the next achievement, Johnny on the spot. Now after finishing this, we see something grand, a fast car. We steal it immediately and take her out for a spin. Now since it was a special occasion, we drove this car over 80 miles an hour for a solid 10 seconds and by doing so unlocked the next achievement, lead foot, and then immediately crashed into a wall. Ah, perfection. However, it is time folks, it is time to solve this once and for all. On one of the mornings, we wake up some pretty cryptic clues delivered to the police station. It's basically a cat and mouse chase at this point and we need to follow the clues. Now it's pretty obvious that this is the work of the Black Dahlia killer, however the boss is terrified of the scandal that will happen if we have to let five people go. However, we proceed. With every bizarre and intense location, we get another clue and a trophy that he took from one of the women that he murdered. From the building of public records chandelier to a lovely tar ride with Rusty. And that's not a euphemism by the way, we actually did take a sailboat across a lake of tar with our partner Rusty. Just to not a euphemism. My point is that we find them all. Oh, and before I forget, during this we also did some more small crimes, as you can imagine. And in one, we shot dead our 100th criminal. By doing so, you guessed it, we unlocked Dead Men Are Heavier. However, we find the final note and figure out that a church is his endgame. Once inside, everything seems abandoned, but we're not alone as Garrett Mason presents himself as the mastermind behind it all. Remember? It was the nobody person from the Bamba Club! Yep, it turns out that he set every other man up. As in his way, shop in the church is every single murder weapon, clue, and basically it's him. So it's time to put this slime down for good, and we do. He takes a couple of bullets, however the Black Dahlia killer goes down and it's a win for everybody. Well, not in the slightest actually, because the boss then comes in saying that he's going to bury the case, to avoid the scandal that he was worried about. But from this we actually do get promoted. We are now a vice detective, which is great because I really need a change of career pace from the corpses of women. So now it's time to enter the world of drugs. Ah, how magical. And as as you'd expect from the promotion as well, we unlock the next achievement, the simple art of murder. Now with Roy Earl as our partner, our starting case has us find a couple of dead men who overdosed on army morphine. We track it to a popcorn stand, because why not popcorn workers can sell drugs? We go down the evidence line and track it down to a company that sell ice. Inside the ice are the copious amounts of copium. We arrest the dude who committed the crime and jobs are good and. Now the next mission is another DLC mission with its own set of achievements, so let's get straight to it. From a criminal informant, we find out that somebody new is in town supplying the residents with all of the Mary Jane that they could ever get. An inevitable shootout happens and on the corpse of the deceased we find a silver dollar. Not important now, but it will be later on. We search his house for the generic clues and inside of his shed find a hidden compartment. In there, we hit the mother load. Cans of innocent soup that turn out to be criminal cans of bud. But when we open two cans in the shed, we also unlock the next achievement, soup in the pot. Now again, nothing too interesting happens here. A lot of LA Noir is just bouncing from place to place, finding clues until the murderer or the culprit reveal themselves. Of course, that's just how crime works, but I just don't want to go over the same stuff that we've gone through. Now, throughout the case, we've been finding more people that have been supplying the spare weed that Snoop Dogg is no longer enjoying. And with them all, a silver dollar was found. After a shootout at the soup factory, we find all of the dollars. And since words have been printed onto them, when rearranged, they give us the location of an address. But more importantly, we also unlock the next achievement for piecing them together, unlocking spare a dime. From this, we then find the warehouse and the gang sorting all of this out. And dead are alive, they are coming with us. For completing the case, we also unlock every hair bearing seed. And surprise, surprise, folks, we've got another DLC mission straight afterwards. The next one has us go into the flat of a woman who has overdosed. And we even find a morphine syringe in the lobby. Time to find the rest. We find her in the bathroom and the medical examiner says that she didn't OD, but that she was murdered, even though there were pills everywhere. Through more investigation, we also find all of the wonderful drugs in her house. It turns out that she had a lot of different kinds. So when we found them all, we unlocked the first achievement for the DLC, a good looking corpse. But that's not all. During an interview with the 
cleaning lady that found her body, we find out that she had a gentleman friend that didn't want to be known, and we rise the ranks to level 20. When we hit level 20, we also unlock the next achievement as well, the brass. We then go straight to interview the doctor that prescribed all the medication. He blames it on the fact that she wanted to be a model so was dealing with a hell of a lot, but the medical examiner also has some more information for us. The woman was indeed murdered, but oddly enough, one of the two killers who did it got himself killed a couple of hours later. Later on in the mission as well, we have to pick up a person of interest and drive her home. Simple, right? Well, we do such a phenomenal job for once that we don't cause any fuss. And for getting her back to her apartment without crashing or maiming anybody, we unlock the next achievement, chauffeur service. Now, honestly, this case is an incredibly long one, and there are many twists and turns, of which I frankly don't have the time to go through. Long story short, the dead woman was actually the leader of a burglary ring, and two of her subordinates killed her. We also find out that the person she was seeing was the doctor. Dun dun dun. To cut a long story short, he just throws himself out of a window. Honestly, this case was really confusing to me, so let's just end it. Around 30 minutes later, we find some goon playing the harmonica, and since that is now a crime, we chase him up to a rooftop. We're not the best with our accuracy right now, but it's for a point, as our next achievement has us shoot every single letter of this sign down. Once done, we unlock Give My Regards. An interesting one, but with that, the case is over, and we unlock another achievement as well, 8 million stories. Now, the next case for Vice is honestly another simple one, and we've gone through the same paces many times before. Again, some musicians end up dead thanks to the morphine still getting out, and one of the people that we have to talk to is Elsa. We've been getting friendlier over the last couple of months, however, not too friendly as Phelps has a wife and kids, and he wouldn't cross that line. Oh, look at that, Cole's going down a corridor. That must be quite nice, I wonder- Oh, Elsa! That's a bizarre coincidence, isn't it? Eh, uh, Cole, why- why are you going in? Oh, oh no. Maybe he is willing to cross that line. Yeah, they pump. Anyway, during the mission, we eventually get to a shootout in which someone on a roof is currently unloading onto a bus. We stop him and talk to the driver who we think was the target. He's an old war vet like Phelps, and through talking to him, we eventually get him to give us some names about a heist that happened. And in doing so, we unlocked the Fighting Sixth. Now, the theory is that his old war friends have become part of a team that is supplying the morphine. But something happens. When we're talking to another old friend of ours, our boss is burst into the room demanding to speak to us, as we are now suspicious. Suspended? Wait, suspended? What? Now, it turns out that the press caught wind of our little, <coughs> little dalliance, if we can call it that. But we're now getting charged with adultery, and since we can't serve with a record, we are fired until the hearing. Well, good riddance, I didn't need the job anyway. Oh, and I also need to medically show you this, because this is what happens when we go to confront our wife about this all. Yeah, enjoy. I can't stand it, Cole. Well, then sit down. When she said she couldn't stand it, I didn't think she'd crash me bastard game! However, with our career ruined and for completing every single vice case, we also unlock no rest for the wicked. Now it's time for the final desk before all of the cleanup and then having to go through the entire game again. Oh, it's gonna be a long one. Again, folks, even though we've now got a new partner and now investigate prodigy number one hit songs, <laughs> get it? Fire starters, we're solving arson cases. Anyway, my point is that there is nothing new here. There are basically just more hurdles to get through at every stage so the cases feel longer. But essentially, there's nothing that we haven't done before. And with so much information, that I haven't been able to include. Honestly, even if I did explain everything here perfectly for you, you probably still wouldn't understand. As I said, LA Noir is a beefy bloody game and it is all connected. So I hope you don't mind, but we're gonna get this over quite quickly with. Now, the actual first achievement that we get here is nothing story related at all. It just has us do a lot of driving. Now, throughout the game, apparently we have driven over 194.7 miles and that's incredibly specific. So specific, in fact, that we unlock miles on the clock for doing so. Now, the first mission is about us catching a murderer who is tampering with gas boxes to houses and causing them to explode. Nice fella, eh? With more old houses getting burnt down, however, we soon start to suspect somebody in charge of the housing development business, thinking that he's getting rid of the old to pave way for the new and expensive. However, apparently during our interview with him, we outwit him. Jesus Christ, don't ask me how. But for doing so, we unlock our next achievement as well, Huckster. 
From here, honestly, this is where it gets pretty complicated. The conspiracy blows up massively as old friends, partners, bosses, everybody starts to get dragged into this mess. This section basically ends with a friend of Phelps called Jack Kelso. He shoots the businessman that we just interviewed in context to all of this. Again, so, so complicated. However, after this moment, we have another DLC mission. Whilst out filling the car with petrol, we see a nuke go off basically in the distance. Arriving at the scene, it almost looks like it was a bomb. However, it turns out to be some form of major industrial accidents. During the evidence gathering, we come across some form of dish. By moving it so that the words match, we also find out that it's a prop spinner from a plane, and also get the achievement the nose knows. At the site, we find clues on espionage, and following the evidence, it leads us to a house that has been absolutely trashed. Around it, we find the generic clues, however, the biggest I would say is the human ice cube in the freezer. Ah, nice and chilled. However, with this and finding a pin on the floor, we find every clue in the flat and unlock yet another achievement in skeletons in the icebox. Now, the culprit turns out to be Vernon Mapes, somebody who was working with military airships. We investigate a house that we actually see Mapes be the one to set on fire, so we chase him immediately. He drives back to his base with us in hot pursuit. We follow him so flawlessly that when we arrive at the base as well, we unlock out of the frying pan. Now, this part's weird, however, we immediately fight the military, tearing them limb from limb because we can, I guess. However, here lies another achievement as well. Now, at two points in this part, cars will arrive with reinforcements we have to shoot the drivers of the cars and kill them before they exit. Definitely took a couple of tries, but when we finally succeed, we also unlock Bulletproof Windshield. With the military taken care of, we catch him and the case is over. For doing so, you're going to be amazed in knowing that we unlock the next achievement as well, the Big Unfriendly. However, folks, it's time for the final mission of the game. There have been so many things leading up to this, and honestly, I am really sorry that I couldn't explain it all as I normally do. However, it starts with somebody kidnapping Elsa and killing her therapist. We eventually find a cabin as Jack Kelso that I swear I saw in Heavy Rain, and in here we have our next achievement as well. For finding and collecting over 95% of every clue in the game, we unlock Magpie. But at this point, we find the syndicate of bad guys and chase them into the sewers. We think Elsa is being held in here, so it is time to save the day. And we save the day with a flamethrower. When I suggest some fire to the lovely residents of these sewers, it also gives us our next achievement for killing an enemy with every gun in the game. And we also unlock Roscoe and friends. Eventually, we reach Elsa and her kidnapped. It turns out that he is also the arsonist and the old sergeant from Jack and Phelps' war unit. He's not doing too well and is suffering a really bad PTSD attack and still believes that he's in the war. However, no time for a reunion, the rain is about to flood the sewers. We manage to find a grate in the floor and get Elsa and Jack to safety. However, unfortunately, it is too late for Phelps. He says goodbye and gets swept away lovingly by the water where he had a long and relaxing life. I am of course joking, he is dead. With our death though, the game ends and we unlock moth to a flame for completing the last arson cases and the game. But folks, that's not even half of the grind done with yet. It is a beefy game, as I said. So even though we finished the main campaign, we still have to do all of the cleanup, the case miscellaneous achievements, the collectibles before going through every single mission again, five starring it. So we still have a hell of a lot to do. Let's just, let's, let's get to it. Let's just get to it. Now we have already gone through more or less every single street crime available at the time. However, we did miss a couple. So finishing those was our first step. I was only missing two. So we quickly found them and cleaned them up, unlocking the long arm of the law. After that, it's time for all of the collectibles, the landmark locations, the cards, the newspapers, and the golden film reels. It's a lot more than I was expecting from this game. However, thanks to the power of editing, we can wrap it up in 30 seconds. So our first step was to find the landmarks. Definitely the easiest one to go through out of the collection as you find a ton through the campaign anyway. But with the last, we unlock star map. After that, we found and drove every vehicle in the game. This one absolutely sucked. Some of the spawn rates for the cars was ridiculous and could take hours. However, one by one, we found the ones that we needed. Eventually, and oh my god, so thankfully, we unlocked Auto Fanatic. Genuinely cannot stress how horrible this one was. Anyway, the next was the golden film reels, one of the easiest, but it can just take a while as you have to go through the entire map to find them all. And the map to this game is absolutely massive. So a couple of hours later, we find the last last one on a bench and unlock Hollywoodland. With this, we only had a single newspaper left to get that tasty 100%. Now, these appear during the missions, so they were easy to find. Once that final collection of thin paper was in my hand, we got the 100% and unlocked the next achievement, the City of Angels. Still some more cleanup left now though, folks, and it's time for specific stuff that you have to do during certain missions that we missed in our first playthrough. Now, every time in this game, when you level up, you can unlock intuition points that you can spend when you're stuck, either revealing evidence that you've missed or helping you interrogate a suspect. 
we just have to use four points in a single interview. It's easily done when you know which interview to spend them on, so when we reloaded, we used them and unlocked the hunch. Now, earlier in traffic, we interviewed somebody called Gene Archer. In fact, we did a terrible job of this, so this time we go back and perfectly outwit her for another achievement in Fem Imbecile. In Reefer Madness, when the shootout begins, instead of just unloading into their stupid heads like we did before, this time we sneak around the back and break in, killing them. Doing this also unlocks forcible rear entry. The next was just odd. We find a clue in the house and have to go directly to another location instead of where your gut instinct tells you to go. It's a real easy achievement, so by heading to the 20th century market during a case, we unlock High Flyer. Now, the last two were extremely tricky for me. I was really struggling with them. Both achievements are tailing related, and I honestly cannot stress how much I hated these. The first is for following somebody called Candy Edwards. For this, you have to complete the scene without hiding in cover. It doesn't sound difficult, but this took me hours to get, as the smallest mistake meant that I had to start again, and it sucked. But we eventually pushed through and unlocked the moose. And finally, for following Henry Arnett without being spotted. Definitely hard at first, but once you learn the right path, it does kind of become a doddle. So even though I struggled to learn that path, once we did, we unlocked Fake Clue. With that, folks, we only have one achievement left, to get five stars on every mission in the game. Now, I knew that there was two ways that I could go about this grind, to play from a guide straight away and get this on my first playthrough, or to play normally and repeat it all at the end. And I really wanted to experience this game properly, and I couldn't do that if I had all of the answers in front of me. So even though this added at least another 20 hours to the grind, I knew that this was the fair and right call. So we got to work. We were simply phenomenal in every case, and over time we started getting 5 stars after 5 stars. As I said, this easily took another 20 hours, and even though it was a hell of a grind, I was still really enjoying myself. However, we eventually reached the end. With the final mission complete and that glorious 5 golden badges, we complete everything that there is to complete in the game and unlock the final achievement, Seamus to the Stars. My lord, finishing this finally felt so good. I can't even stress how good it felt to be finally over with this game. Not in a negative way, I adored this game through and through, but the grind was a lot more intense than I really would have imagined. So yeah, it felt great to be done. However, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's just move on as for now, the grind is over. Now, for me, L.A. Noir was phenomenal. Simply, simply phenomenal. I think it is one of the most groundbreaking games of the 360 era, and I really think that not only is it slept on, but horrendously underrated. And when people ask you, oh, if you could make a sequel to any game, what game would you choose? My opinion would be L.A. Noir. I think a modern 2023-24 L.A. Noir 2 would be just simply phenomenal. But I'm a little bit unsure if we're ever going to get that, I'm afraid. So it's still good to know that the first one's just just fun to go through. Now, don't get me wrong, LA Noir has its problems, definitely isn't the flawless game. I think first off, and it's a quite a small point that I want to make, is that the map is far too big, absolutely far too big. It takes just simply far too long to get from one side to the other, especially if you're doing that mid case and then also have to go and deal with street crimes and collectibles as well. It's just a little bit bigger than it needs to be, so it kind of artificially inflates the game by just making it take longer to reach your actual destination. And even though I did really enjoy the story, in the cases of L.A. Noir, I can't help but feel like some of them really outstayed their welcome. One of the best examples for this is the Naked City, the DLC. That took nearly three hours to go through, and honestly, the story didn't make any sense. I think the best cases personally were the ones that ended about an hour, an hour and a half mark at the absolute max. But on that note, I don't think there are any bad cases, just long-winded ones that maybe overstay the welcome just a touch. On the whole, L.A. Noir is still very much my favourite Rockstar game. I think it is absolutely great groundbreaking for its time, it's fun and it's inviting, it's chaotic, it's a little bit of everything. And as I said, I would love nothing more than a sequel to this game. And considering that I've been gaming for the last 20 years, I actually don't think that I've played that many Rockstar games, so maybe it's time to expand my horizons and see if this is my favourite game by maybe playing some more Rockstar games as well. So if you want that, let me know in the comments, leave likes and all that shit. But for now, let's just go to the stats. For LA Noir, it took us 69 nice hours to get all 60 achievements in the game. Game. I'm going to give this game a really well-deserved 8.5 out of 10. As I said, there are some problems with this, but it is very difficult not to have a good time on this game, so I think it's fair. For difficulty, I'm going to give it a 5. There is a lot, and I mean a lot, to do here. Mission-specific achievements, collectibles, at least one playthrough depending on how you tackle it, and a bunch of RNG. So I think a 5 is fair. It's doable, but you have to be prepared to sink the time in. For the hardest achievement, 
I'm going to be giving it to Auto Fanatic as well, as finding some of those cars was nothing more than hellish thanks to Smeggy RNG. But folks, that's it from me today. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you all so much for watching. Please let me know down in the comments what your favourite Rockstar game is, and maybe one day I'll cover it. But in all seriousness, I really do hope you enjoyed the video today. I know that the format was not really like what I've done before, but LA Noir's a special kind of bitch, so I really still hope that you enjoyed the video, even though I differed from what I normally do. And I also, of course, hope that you really enjoyed, well, this, me. <laughs> this is something that I've wanted to do for the channel for quite a long time and you folks have finally got me to the point where I'm able to do it. Obviously, I still need to tweak some stuff. It isn't perfect, perfect yet, but it will be. And I just want to say thank you all so much for the support and I, again, I really hope you enjoyed this. And whilst you're at it though, folks, why don't you come swing by and say hello on Twitch as well? Even if it is just a quick hello, it would very much be appreciated. You are all more than welcome and I hope to see you there. And of course, need to thank all of my amazing patrons as well. You are amazing amazing you're the bollocks you are wonderful thank you all so much for the support but that is it from me today folks thank you all so so much for watching i really really do appreciate it i hope you enjoyed the video and if you did don't forget to like and subscribe and i will see you all next time so have a fantastic week everybody take care bye bye for now